Hi, I'm Ethan, co-creator of Bit and Byte. Bit and Byte is a two-dimensional platformer game in which two players have to work together to solve a level. There is a total of five levels in the game, and each level has its own unique set of puzzles. In, those, in these levels, there are enemies that will trigger alarms once they spot the players, and there are traps that will deal damage to the players, such as spikes. Both players, Bit and Byte, have unique sets of attributes. Bit is able to jump large distances and move really quickly, while Byte is much slower. However, he is able to disguise himself to deceive the enemy and sneak past them, and therefore not trigger the alarms. The project Bit and Byte was predominantly done in class and over voice call. Me and Daniel will schedule meetings so that we could dis discuss coding, level design, and scheduling. We employed many of the techniques we learned in class and also did some extra research to learn applications like Tiled. Tiled allowed us to make uh, tile maps for our game. We also used a coding repository called GitHub. We used uh, GitHub so that we could exchange code between us and push for updates, as well as revert back to some older versions, just in case there were too many bugs within this new update. The most challenging part of the development process was compromising. Throughout development, there were aspects of the game that we had to cut out because they are either too complicated or too ambitious given the due date. For example, Byte was originally supposed to be able to push objects around. However, after multiple attempts and little success, we decided to cut this aspect out. By working through the project from the planning stage all the way to the deployment, I feel like I've learned a lot more about project development. I've also learned a lot about organization, communication, and time management by working with my partner, Daniel. We also learned how to use a coding repository called GitHub, which allowed us to manage our code, send code between us, and update our code. The computer science course not only taught us about coding, but also taught us skills like project management and the project development process that can be useful in the workforce and in future projects. It was an easy decision to create Bit and Byte. We wanted to find a way to incorporate all the material we learned in the computer science course. Ethan and I both have a great interest in the world of computer science and made it our overarching theme for our game. With our knowledge of online gaming, we found that a two-dimensional platformer game would allow us to add our own creative elements to the project. The purpose of creating Bit and Byte was to allow us to test our game designing abilities. It was made to culminate all of our knowledge about computer science into one large project that we could be proud of. We wanted to be able to proudly present our game to other people. Many are intimidated by large amounts of code, but a game is much easier to understand, making it a lot less frightening. Creating this game was definitely a learning experience. I have learned that teamwork is a very important part of the game design process. It allows all members of the party to share their creativity and ideas as they tackle problems together. During the process of creating Bit and Byte, Ethan and I helped each other with designing and coding the game by sharing our different perspectives and points of view. There were many challenges along the way, but the most challenging part of this project was letting go of ideas. We wanted to implement all sorts of things, from achievements to collectibles. Letting go of these ideas was very difficult but necessary because of the time restraint. Another difficulty was to learn completely new applications, but by overcoming these challenges, we were able to make a game we were both proud of. The most rewarding part of creating Bit and Byte was definitely the finished product. Seeing the completed game with functioning mechanics and visual design was very fulfilling and gave a sense of pride to both me and Ethan. Hello, my name is Andrew Del Duca. This year, my grade 11 computer science class me and my partner, Ryan, created a video game called Zombieland, which I will discuss about today. Our original idea was to create a game with wave-based levels, so there is no final level and players only stop playing when they run out of lives. We landed on Zombieland because we were inspired by great wave-based games that we had played in the past, such as Plants vs. Zombies. The purpose of Zombieland was to create a game with endless fun and infinite possibilities. I learned some great coding techniques along this journey and discovered the complexity of video game coding. We also developed our collaboration skills 
by learning to work through issues that we encountered in the, with the code along the way. The most challenging part in my opinion was the constant testing and retesting of the code to make sure the game always and continually runs smoothly. The most rewarding part was seeing the overall final product come together with all the extras including the final boss, shop screen, and help screen. Overall, the game required much effort but was extremely rewarding and paid off well. Thank you for listening and have a great day. Hello, my name is Michael Del Duca, and the game which I have created is called Dungeon Warriors. Dungeon Warriors is an action-adventure platformer game where you are required to travel and defeat enemies in order to collect power cores. The main reason why I have created this type of game is primarily because I find these types of games to be extremely enjoyable. I wanted to create something that offers the player a fun time for hours while still finding it to be challenging. To put it together, first I used all my concepts and knowledge from the course utilizing coding techniques such as loops, classes, and conditionals. Another tool I used was researching other examples of game code, seeing how others had coded, in order to give myself some coding concepts. Lastly, I watched videos that would explain in depth the various functions that were implemented into the programming software, which I could use to help myself to code. The most challenging part of creating my game was starting the project from scratch. Starting with nothing and having to build the project from the foundation upwards was easily the most difficult part. However, once I had the foundation, it was much easier and smoother. I learned a wide variety of things, such as new functions in Python, how to create movement in Python, and much more. The most rewarding part of the project was at the end of the day, being able to sit down and play a game which I had made on my own. It's a fantastic feeling being able to play my very own game, knowing that all my hard work throughout the year had finally paid off.